Cool. All right. Quick explanation about the motors. Um, they'll have kind of a letter and two numbers after them. The first letter, it's kind of like how much gas is in the motor. Um, it's the total impulse, but what that means, it's like how much fuel is in there. So um, how far it could potentially, your rocket could go, right? The second number is your average. It's like your average thrust. So the bigger the number, it's like the more you're pushing down on the gas pedal, right? So the faster it will go. And then the number after the dash is the delay in seconds before a deployment charge backfires essentially and tries to push your parachute out. So for example, like the C67, this has the most gas, right? Um, but it has the middle of the road in terms of thrust. The B44, so it has less total gas than the C67 and less average thrust. But then there's like this A10, right? Um, it has the lowest amount of total impulse, so the, the least amount of gas, right? Like your rocket will go the lowest on this one, but it has the highest average thrust, so it will actually go faster, potentially, than this one during that flight. Big generalization, but that's basically what those numbers mean. All right, so fold in the chute. Um, first thing, a lot of these Estes chutes have like a little circle in the middle. And you'll see there's actually like a dotted line. Um, I would recommend cutting out that circle. It's, it gives it what's called a spill hole. So these can fall faster and they won't drift as far. And uh, most SS rockets like could <laughs> don't even need a parachute. They're so light, they could just fall down. So um, that'll help things stay in your field. Um, but basically, oh yeah, and in the winter, the plastic is gonna wanna stick together and your chute may not open if it's really cold. So just take some baby powder and like sprinkle baby powder on this and that'll help it open when it's cold out but you basically just pinch the center grab all your shroud lines make sure they're not tangled pull it together like this put a finger where they all go and then you're just going to pull triangles apart like this um, each each part of the chute um, is called a gore like between the shroud lines so you're just trying to stack all the gores on top of each other um, so again, just pinch it in the middle, pull your shroud lines, put a finger down, and then you're just trying to pull triangles together and stack the shroud lines. Yeah, I'll come check in a second, buddy. So, putting the finger down. What do you think? Are we folding parachutes, kiddo? Hmm. Do you want to say hi? Yeah. All right. So you just today put we're gonna build Legos. <laughs> well, today we're folding parachutes. Okay. So um, once you get all the triangles together neatly, take press the right one. No, no, leave it on. Okay. Take your shroud lines. Put them right in there. What's the shroud line? That's these strings. So you want to put them in there so they don't get tangled. And then there's two ways you can finish. You can coil it up like this. And when it comes out, yep, watch your fingers, buddy. It'll open slowly, um, which might be a little more gentle on the rocket. But on a cold day, or if you want this to open really fast, put your shroud lines in there and then Z fold it, which means you fold it on itself like this. Hi. Yeah, well, look up, buddy. Today, it's Lego day. <laughs> we want to show them our parachute, Open right? Day. And the Z fold essentially opens like this, really fast, really easy. <laughs> All right, my camera stand got stolen, but basically the thing you want to avoid that I see a lot of people do is they will just coil up their parachute and then they will just wrap the shroud lines around it. Um, not a fan of that because as these as the line comes out, it can knot itself. And also, the parachute can like pull itself through the shroud lines if you do it that way and tangle itself up. So just try to like keep them nice and neat and draped inside the parachute. And that will make sure as it deploys that they pull out without tangling. 
Okay, just some quick tricks for launching Estes rockets. Um, so the back of the rocket's gonna look something like that. That's your motor mount. We'll take the right size motor. You're just gonna push it in there. And this is the igniter. So there's like a little bridge here. Basically electrical current will uh, make that hot enough to ignite the black powder in here. Just make sure that these two things aren't touching. Like if they, if they're looking like that, it's just gonna short out and not fire. So just kind of spread these apart gently enough like that. Um, oh, and before you get down there, I like to just bend these like this too. So your alligator clips from the launch controller have a little bit more to grab onto. Um, and then you just put it in the back of the motor till it stops, bend it away from your launch lugs. And then there's these little yellow plugs or the plugs might be a different color depending on what size motor you're using. But basically put that igniter in there and then use this plug to hold it in place. Um, fold the parachute neatly, obviously, instead of the, um, the paper wadding that Estes supplies, a lot of people like this stuff. We call it dog barf, but all it is, it's blown in insulation, um, cellulose insulation. So it's basically like a treated newspaper. So it's fireproof. Um, and it's pretty biodegradable too. So normally you take like a handful of that and stuff it in on top of the motor. Um, a good rule of thumb is like, however wide this is go at least that thick with it um, and that'll keep the parachute from getting burnt yeah and then basically you'll have a little launch rod here um this is like the key to the launch controller so it won't launch without that keep it keep <laughs> it's got this little cap keep that on top of the rod until you're ready to launch this just keeps you from poking your eye as you like bend over to put the rocket on there and stuff um it's just kind of a safety thing. So that just kind of stays on top of the launch rod till you're ready to use it. You'll have these little launch lugs like right here. Just slide the rocket down your launch rod. And then this is your launch controller. Basically stretch these cables out. Those two igniters that we uh, the two leads to the igniter that we just put in, basically clamp one of these to each side. Um, the exhaust from the, the motors tends to rust these up pretty good. It's pretty corrosive. Um, so hit these with some sandpaper. And then basically these will connect to the motor. Then you will make sure the range is clear, the sky is clear, and you'll put this key in. And that will light up if there's continuity, meaning if it's connected properly. If it doesn't light up, it means there's a break somewhere. Probably probably try a different igniter. But um, once that's lit up, it means it's ready to launch. Uh, give it a countdown from five. And when you're ready to go, just push that button. Uh, you might have to hold it down for a couple seconds, but it will, uh, you know, the bridge of that igniter will heat up. It'll ignite the black powder and then that thing will take off and hopefully fly and then uh, the motor will have a little delay. It should backfire an ejection charge and push your parachutes out. So have fun.